I got a drone because I heard you needed one to be big on YouTube, and then I crashed it. This video is how to fix the gimbal suspension, gimbal control cable, and video data cable after crashing a Mavic Pro drone into a wall. If you're curious, the video leading up to this crash can be seen toward the end of my last travel video. Also, I do have DJI Care, but I had such a terrible experience with their customer service that I would rather just fix it myself. Turns out there are much better ways to liberate $100 from your bank account. As you can see, the gimbal is still in good shape, but everything holding it on took quite a hit. The wire looking cable is the video data cable, and the ribbon cable is for the gimbal motors. It's handy to have one of these multi-bit screwdriver sets, but specifically for the Mavic Pro, you'll need a 1.5mm hex bit, a small screwdriver bit, a small flathead is helpful for prying, a plastic pry tool, I got this one with a replacement screen for my last phone, and of course the new suspension mount, the new ribbon cable, and the new video cable. The first step is to remove all the propellers and the battery from the drone. Next, there are six hex screws on the top of the drone that need to be removed. I like to keep them in the same pattern as they are removed to easily remember where they go. Flipping it over, there are two small panels that need to be removed under the front arms which reveal two of the remaining four screws to be removed in order to take the top cover off. Be careful when removing the top cover as the Wi-Fi module is plugged into the back. To remove the gimbal assembly, four Phillips screws need to be removed and they can be identified by using the new suspension mount as a location guide. Carefully remove the four ribbon cable connectors as well as the black and white power connector. The front ribbon connectors have some kind of glue on them, so be careful and patient when removing them to prevent damage. Now that the gimbal assembly is removed, the suspension mount can be removed by removing two Phillips screws. At this point, it's a bunch of tiny Phillips screws to remove all the cable covers on the gimbal. I'll upload the real-time version of this clip and link it for those who need to see it slower. Be careful when removing the camera, it is stuck with some thermal paste and some patience and careful prying needs to be done once the two screws on the side are removed.
At this point, it's just a matter of replacing the existing cables with the new ones and putting the covers back on. This will also be in the real-time version that is linked to. The biggest thing to be careful of is making sure that nothing is pinched and the gimbal can freely move in all its degrees of motion. Also, be sure that all the connections are seated properly. If one connection does not have good contact, nothing on the gimbal will work. For a pro tip, sticking a small magnet to the bit will make it easier to place the tiny screws. With the gimbal back together, it's time to put the new suspension mount on. Make sure to carefully slide the ribbon cable through the slot in the mount. It's a little harder to put the screws back in when it isn't broken, but it can be held to the side to get clearance for the screwdriver. Once I had it all back together, I noticed that the assembly I bought was assembled backwards from the original. I ended up ordering two at the time, so I was able to just put the gimbal on the one that was oriented correctly. With the gimbal attached, the next step is to remove the circuit board on the top of the old mount by removing three Phillips screws and then remounting it on top of the new suspension mount. Also, be sure to attach the gimbal motor control cable and video data cable to the circuit board before putting it back in the drone because you won't be able to reach the sockets once it's installed. Once the gimbal assembly is put back together, carefully place it back in the drone body by feeding the power wire through the space provided. The four Phillips screws can be put back and then carefully reattach the four ribbon cables in the respective locations as well as the power cable.
Be sure they are all seated well, as this one wasn't, and I ended up taking the whole thing back apart trying to find the one that wasn't seated properly, and ended up breaking the video cable in the process. So I had to order another one. To put the top cover back on, be sure to plug the Wi-Fi module back in toward the back of the drone, and then just snap the top cover in place. This is a good time to throw a battery in and double check that everything works as well. As I mentioned, I needed to replace the video data cable again since I broke it trying to troubleshoot the connections the first time. I will also link to a real-time version of this part of the video just in case the extra angles will help someone else. Assuming you've made it this far, the only thing left to do is put the case back together. Carefully snap the top cover back in place and reinstall the six upper hex screws. Next, reinstall the lower four hex screws, make sure the cover is completely snapped in place, otherwise the screws won't go in. The last step in the reassembly is to carefully put the two small panels back in place. The screws that hold these in also tension the spring that keeps the legs snapped in place, and it can be a little tricky, but with a little patience, we'll go back together nicely. Once everything is together, drop a battery in, and if the gimbal does a little dance, it should be good to go.
You can quickly check the stabilization by rotating it around as well. And finally, take a test flight and get some epic footage again. All in all, I'm really impressed with how hard these drones can be crashed and with a little effort and some new parts, be back in the air so quickly. Hopefully this was useful to someone, and if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe.